Alright guys, <laughs> your boy here to finally finish Ratchet and Clank 3. This, it, this has been two years. This is getting dumb. This is getting seriously dumb. I also don't know why I haven't bought this yet, if it wasn't available before I went to the last planet or what. What did you guys do to win all these free weapons? Well, if you're with the company for two years, you get an employee discount, and seeing as this LP has taken two years, that must have kicked in. Anyway... Uh, I just find it terribly ironic that the last episode was called Hiatus Terminatus, or Stop. Stop the Hiatus. And then that didn't happen. I did get sick right after my birthday, which was not too long after I released the episode. But there's still a, enough time in between for me to have done this, there's no excuse anymore. If I do anything this long again, whether it be Ratchet Deadlocked or anything else that requires multiple parts, there is no way in hell it's not going to be planned, because this is just dumb. And getting out of hand. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about... Conventions. Not social conventions. Actual, physical conventions that happen in real life. Um, I actually went to my first convention the other day, about about a week ago. Oh shit. Oh jeez. I'm just gonna turn this down, because <laughs> it's all like, oh. Does anyone else have a TV where, like, you set the volume to, like, like, the, the, the maximum number is, like, a hundred, and you set it to, like, two or three, and it's still too loud? <laughs> Because my TV is like that, and it's ridiculous. Also, this is going to upgrade really fast because I haven't used it before. Ow! Right, I have no armor. Yeah, there's, there's a skill point that requires you to infect a certain number of enemies, so... Wow! <laughs> it's kind of stupid. Let's be real. Oh boy. Yeah, I went to EB Expo on, I think it was like last weekend. And I had never been to a convention before. So this was new for me in its entirety. This whole thing. Oh boy. So I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea what it would be like. I knew there'd be games and stuff there. That's about as much as I knew. That's not going to get that. Dude, is it? Nope. I do remember that I can't use weapons that are above, that are maxed out, so, there we go. It was cool, it was fun, it was, it was great. Part of me is skeptical, because, you know, I don't like marketing, and fuck, whoa, okay. I'm, I'm, you know, any kind of marketing and stuff like that, I'm always wary. This is working. I think so. There we go. They died together. Ah, right. Yeah, this bit. Ah, uh, not on here, is it? Yep, it is. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect, so you know, it was kind of like, what's going on here? What's this gonna be like? But it was good. It was enjoyable. It was so much stuff, there was so much stuff. All the big players were there in gaming, you know, Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, Logitech, just every, any, any company you would want to see stuff from, they were there. And for, th for those who don't know, by the way, EB is basically the not American uh, version of the GameStop franchise. So, for Americans, it would be the GameStop Expo. Or I don't know if GameStop runs anything like that in the States, but that's basically what it was. Ah, it was good. As I, as I said, I, I, I do have reservations about paying to access what is effectively a giant marketing thing, because that's the whole point of it. But I did get to play games and stuff, and there was a lot of stuff there that had nothing to do with uh, marketing the newest stuff, which I'll get to later on. Best part, by far. Can, can I jump over this? Yes, I can. Here we go. Awesome, I got the that titanium bolt that I needed. That's all of them. Um, 
the best part and all the worst part depending on how you look at it um the person i was going with they found the day before like a schedule for nintendo um booth and you know they had like a at 10, they'd be showing off Splatoon, and at 11, they'd be showing off Mario Maker and yada yada, right? And they were having a Mario Kart tournament at like 9.30, so like at the very beginning of the day. And I went for like the whole of Saturday, so I went for like two... Like they sell it in like... Uh, like one... One session is half a day, so I went for two sessions. The, both sessions on the, on the Saturday. So each session they, had, they would have the same kind of rundown. At the beginning of the Saturday session, they had a Mario Kart tournament. And that's what it was list listed as. Mario Kart Tournament. So I'm like, alright, I love me some Mario Kart. Anytime there's a Mario Kart Tournament, I am in there. I'm not doing very well, it's because I'm not concentrating. Anytime there's a Mario Kart Tournament, I'm in there. All the way, so... We got there early, and we went to the booth, and we sat down for the Mario Kart Tournament. This, this person I was with and me. And the guy comes out and he brings out some pro controllers like, alright, who wants to play some some Mario Kart 8? And I'm like, yes. So I put my hand up and some other people put their hands up. Now, out, now the, the layout of this thing, which is important, is like, there's a huge TV, like this huge screen in front of me. And... Well, here we go. And... Oh, I'm dead. It's going to take me out to the beginning, isn't it? Yep. Oh, well. There's going to be more time to tell the story because I don't know if I'm going to have enough time. Wow, I didn't even... I pressed the button and it just instantaneously upgraded. Wow! Jesus. Alright, I don't have any spare health anymore. I'm going to have to be careful. Yeah, I'm just going to continue hitting enemies with this thing. Until I get that skill point. So I just want the skill point. It doesn't say kill 25 enemies, it just says hit them, but you may as well. Just shoot them as much as possible. So right, there's a big screen, there's a whole bunch of like bean bags and stuff in front of it. And we're right at the front of the beanbag, so I can't see anyone behind me, I can't really see anyone beside me either. All I can see is the big screen, and there's like two people, like adults, kind of on either side of me, so you know. It was like an adult to my right, and I think a kid to my left, I don't know. Anyway. Guy comes out and says, who's playing Mario Kart? I put my hand up straight away. The guy gives the control to three people. Like, gives three controls to, to three different people, and then gives me the last control. So I just got in there. And they start off... I, I instantly know what card I'm picking, what character I'm picking, I'm ready to go. These people are kind of taking a straggling behind, kind of flicking through their options. They they pick their their cards. The guy picks like the the shell cup, which is like the easiest retro cup. So it's made up of stages that were in the previous Mario Kart games. So I've had the most practice. This is not they're not only tracks in Mario Kart 8, which I've played for like at least 200 hours, but they're tracks that I've played in games before this. I think I'm playing, pressing R2 by default. It's kind of weird. Ah. There we go. That's, that was weird. Wow, it's already up to it's already up to max weapon level. Okay. I've got no idea if I've got it yet. Okay, once they're infected, you don't have to do anything else. Um, do I have the skill point yet? Point. No. You still have 28. Okay. So he picks like the, the easiest retro cup and we start racing and I'm pretty far ahead. Apart from like a blue shell. Oh god. Please just. Oh no! <laughs> that is what I get. That is what I get. When I finish this story, you'll look back on that and go, yep, he deserved that. Also, do I have a million bolts? Sweet, I can go buy the Inferno. Ooh, does the Inferno armor cost a million bolts? I mean, I can't go buy it now, because I said I'd do the game without it. But, I can go buy it and get that last skill point. 
So right, we're off racing and I'm pretty far in the lead. Apart from a couple of blue shells, nothing really stops me. Oops, a few. One blue shell, you know. Apart from the blue shell, nothing really stops me. And I, I win by a fair, a fair amount. Second race, guy t the guy running the thing takes the controller off me. I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'm like too good or they want to give the controller to somebody else. Like, I don't know. Whatever. And he takes the controller off me the race. He doesn't quit the race or anything though. The race starts. And he, like, turns, when the race starts, he turns around and drives backwards and spins around in circles for about 20 seconds. And, like, oh, and then he gives the controller back to me. I'm like, oh, I see what you're trying to do. I see what's going on here. I see what you're doing. You're trying to give me a handicap. Alright, I, I, can, I can play this game. Alright. So, he gives me the controller back and I get back in first place within like a lap. It says, see how it says R2 down the bottom? I'm pressing R2. It's not moving. I press R1. Oh. Oh, it does work. Then why wasn't it working before? That's weird. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just delusional. Anyway. How long have I ever played this game for? Fucking 10 years, I still don't know how it works. Why do I still have this skill point? This is kind of insane. See, so yeah, I, I catch up within like a lap of this guy giving me this handicap. Oh boy. And I go on to win the race. Third track, I win again by a fair way. There we go. That's his good point. Use that. Anymore. And a, a Grand Prix is like four races long. So, and they ended it after the third race was done because I'd won every. I don't know if that was because I won every race or because they were just like, "There's no point in going on anymore because there's no way anyone else can catch up to him, catch up to me at this point." There was a Lawrence statue over there. Um, and when they were done, I said, "All right, we're gonna give each of our participants a goodies bag," and they gave me like they gave everyone like a Wii U bag with a drink bottle in it and a Splatoon hat, which was pretty cool. And then they said, "We're gonna give our winner a Mario amiibo," and everyone like, round applause for the guy who won. So yay! And then they gave me the Mario amiibo. And the person who I was with who taking me to the convention said, what? Look around you, the, per the people you just beat, the, pe the other people in the race were like five to eight year old children. What have you done? And I looked around and indeed she was right. The, pe the two of the people who, ha who had controls in their hands were little children. So I basically massacred children at Mario Kart to win an amiibo. I destroyed children at a game I've been playing for longer than they've been, or a series I've been playing for longer than they've been alive slaughtered them at it relentlessly because I wasn't I was trying the whole time it wasn't like I was you know going easy on them I was trying to win the whole time and not only did I win I was rewarded for it with a fucking amiibo <laughs> and like I don't want the amiibo <laughs> like I not, not that I'm ungrateful for it it's cool that they gave me it but I'm not gonna use it it's sitting on my printer right now in its box I don't want to take it out of its box and these kids would have way more fun with it than I did, but I didn't think at the time, oh, I'll just give it to them, you know. I'm not going to use it, they can have it, they'll have more fun with it than me, give it to one of them. I didn't think of that, I was too busy feeling good about myself for having destroyed them. So I, I, I destroyed children at Mario Kart to win the Amiibo. To be fair, to be fair, he did fuck me over in that second race by taking the controller off me and making me drive in circles. But it was still kind of completely unfair. I wouldn't if if I had like turned around after you taking the controller off me, and he given it to somebody else, and I didn't realize it was all five to eight year old kids. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. that's that's fair, <laughs> you know, that's fair. But when you say tournaments, 
that implies a level of seriousness. I didn't think they were going to have like a knockout tourney, like, you know, sign up here, we'll do it real serious style. I didn't think that was going to be the case. I knew it would just be a casual couple of races, but I didn't think we'd all be children. You know? Again, it's Nintendo. Of course it's going to be children, but not all children. Jesus. Ah. Speaking of children at the Mario Kart, uh, at the Nintendo area, they did a, a show off of uh, Mario Maker, and I've I've borrowed Mario Maker off the same friend because uh, she wants to focus on uni stuff, so she gave Mario Maker to me, which has thus distracted me from uni work. Thanks a lot. But um, it's really cool. I, I actually want to do some videos on it when I buy the game. It's it's basically LVP but Mario. It's a lot more intuitive. It's a lot more simple. But people are doing a lot of cool stuff with it. People have made a lot of stuff that's not platforming levels. It's really cool to see what different stuff people can kind of do with this game. I've seen people make basketball levels. I've seen people make math levels. I've seen people make password systems. All kinds of bizarre stuff. It's really neat. Because in LBP, especially LBP 2, that, that stuff was kind of... wasn't too difficult to make, but... Even in Mario Maker, it's, it's kind of like how they do, like, make calculators in Minecraft. It's, it's just really, really sweet to see people toying with the system in that way to make neat stuff. So I'd like to make some videos on it. Kind of reluctant because Nintendo's YouTube policy is fucking asinine. But, you know, what can you do? So anyway, they were showing it off to the, to the kids, and... The guy's like, alright, let's let's put together a quick level in like 10 to 15 minutes, alright. So he takes the gamepad and he starts putting stuff together, and he gets suggestions from the kids, alright, what should we do next? And the first thing these kids suggest is like, ah, oh, let's let's put like three Bowsers with wings <laughs> in there. It's like, oh no, we, we can't do that, let's do something else. Like, Jesus, these kids are fucking brutal. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh my god, am I dead again? Ah. Oh. Back to the beginning we go. Oh, I can, bl I can blitz through it now, because I've got... I don't have to keep... Oh my god! This is this is what happens when you go through this with no armor. I can't use the sniper rifle because it's fully upgraded. I can use this though. What am I doing? Oh man, and there were, every time, like he was like, oh, okay, let's instead of putting all the bads, let's make like, uh, like an ice maze. What should we do after the ice maze? Let's put the Bowser Juniors with giant Bowser Juniors stacked on top of each other. It's like, Jesus Christ, children, calm down. <laughs> it's the start of the level. Ah, uh, this is sweet. Anyway, eventually, like, he, he makes a level, and it's a pretty fairly simple level because, you know, it's kids. He's making it forward, and he goes, Okay, now I've finished the level. Who wants to play it? And all the kids put their hands up, and he gives the control to, to, to a kid, and they start playing it. And it's a fairly simple level. You know, it's not super easy, but it's easy enough. And they've seen him make it, so they know all the secrets, they know all the enemy layouts, they know everything about the level. But the problem is... Not that they're kids and that they're bad at platforming or anything. The problem is that the TV, because it's so big, has heaps of input lag. It's got like a quarter second of input lag. So you press the button and only a quarter second later will your player jump, which is really bad in platformers. Anyone who's played platformers on like a laggy LCD will know how annoying that is, because you you need to kind of you press X to jump and by the or A to jump, and by the time you press the button to jump, according to the Wii U, you've run off the edge. But on the screen you're still there. And it's too late to do anything. It's it's really annoying. Um, so anyway, and these kids are having a really hard time doing this level because of that, basically, because uh, it was just there was just so much input lag. What? Oh man, it was. Ooh. So 
it was, it was kind of a, it was kind of silly because the level wasn't hard, and they, and they might have even been getting a bad impression of the game, like, oh wow, this game, the, the controls of this game are kind of laggy. But it wasn't the game. I've played the game. The game, the response time in the game is is pretty much perfect. But the response time in the actual on that screen was terrible, and I had the same problem when playing Mario Kart didn't affect me too much because as I said I won and it affected everyone technically so it wasn't just just a disadvantage for me technically it was fair but yeah and the kids were even picking up on it I like uh, the, like the fourth or fifth kid to, to play the game because they were passing the control controller along I saw him like tap the A button and kind of figure out how much the game was lagging it was I'm like, oh clever kid over here Trying to figure out what the input lag is. Is this gonna kill this guy? See, that was cool. Another game I got to play which hasn't been released yet, uh, Star Fox Zero. That was cool, that was actually the first thing I did that morning before I did the Mario Kart tournament. Pretty fun, I mean, I'm not, I've never been like a huge fan of Star Fox or anything, but it was pretty fun. If I had the money to get it, I would probably get it. Sweet. Oh, oh, how could I not talk about this? I played the Ratchet and Clank demo for the, the new PS4 game. I played that. Ah, it's beautiful. It looks amazing. Like, I, that was the first time I played a, a PS4, so I because I don't have one. And, God, this, this, this is ridiculous. Why is this taking so long? It looks beautiful. Oh, it looks stunning. It does only play in 30 FPS, as far as I know, which is kind of a downer, but it looks stunning. And it's the classic style, it's it's the future style. The style of humor and writing is still kind of kiddy. Like I there was a video of the demo, so I I technically already seen all the cutscenes and everything. They're sticking to that kind of kid friendly approach which kind of deviates and has been deviating from the first three games for a long time. And or oh, deadlocked as well, I suppose. So the first four games. But it's not a bad game. Like the demo is not bad at all. It's it's fantastic. So when I get a PS4, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be picking that up. The pixelated weapon they had was great. <laughs> that was really cool. They had a few weapons that, that were returned uh, from the, some other games in the future series, like the Constructo... the Constructor, was it? I'm not sure. You, you can look up the demo on YouTube, it's not. You know, but, but playing it is different. Especially if you haven't pl played a PS4 before, um, it is kind of different to play with the actual controller and, and that. So, fantastic! Oh, is that level four, or level five, level four? Ooh. Oh no! Are you serious? Okay, I'm not going to play through this again. I'll meet you back there. All right, this should be close enough. Yeah, it, it looks great. It, it, it really is kind of reminiscent of Ratchet and Clank 1 in terms of like the level design, at least for the, the levels that were in the demo. But at the same time, had all like the modern conveniences of all the most recent kind of Ratchet and Clank games. Okay, now I have to get through this bit. I've got not what what can I use? I mean, really, what have I, what have I even got available to me? The plasma whip, which is useless here. The Agents of Doom, the Lava Gun, the Quackomatic, and the Rift Inducer, and the Bouncer, which has no. Oh no, it's got one. I've got one thing left for the Bouncer. Which just destroy cover. Oh man. Oh my god, really? How did that hit me? What the fuck? I've got nothing else that can help me at this point. I believe the rule was, if I ran out of stuff that could help me, I could use whatever I wanted. Oh, fuck! Yeah, I am, I am playing really poorly right now. I guess I'll just cut back in here. I mean, oh man. Terrible gameplay. Terrible, terrible. Now, how much... I have four plasma coil ammo. Okay, I can get rid of the two at the top with that. I'm gonna keep that. 
if I can. Use the bounce on... Okay, I got full bouncer ammo. I should be able to do this. Right then, we should now be able to get to the end. This is basically the last room, as far as I'm aware, before the boss. May as well just do this in all, all the modem, so. Yeah, it, the, yeah, Ratchet and Clank, like, on the PS4 is really reminiscent of the first one in terms of, uh, kind of, the design, like, the level design, but the gameplay mechanics are all very modernized, so it really is a mix of, uh, the best of both worlds, I guess, would be the, the best way to put it. So, I'm really looking forward to it. Ah, we're too late. <laughs> Get in. Okay, now we start the boss battle. Oh dear. If I had that much trouble getting through the level without getting killed. Far out. Those, those green... The big dudes with the green lasers, one hit kill if you don't have um, backup nanotech. One hit kill with no armor. <laughs> so, you really can't let them hit you at all. I'm not, I can't really remember how, di how difficult, I was about to say how difficult nanotech was, how difficult um, nefarious was without armor, but anyway. So yeah, the new Ratchet Clank game will be sweet if you have a PS4, That's definitely gonna, gonna pick it up. I'm looking forward to the film, it's been too fucking long. Ah, oh, man. I don't even know when they announced that, it was so long ago. Anyway. What else happened? Oh yeah, while I was in the PS4 area, the friend I was with, we decided to play some FIFA. Because we play a game called Super Mario Strikers, which is, um... Basically Mario Soccer. Soccer combined with Mario Kart. Soccer... Four on four soccer with items, so shells and bananas and stuff. It's pretty funny, but also very simplistic as a soccer game. There's a lot of auto aim in terms of goal shooting, and you know, it's it's simple compared to FIFA. FIFA is very intricate. Um, so when we were playing FIFA, we had no idea what we were doing, and we we couldn't we could barely dribble the ball, and we didn't know how to tackle properly, and. We couldn't. We didn't score any goals by halftime, and look, these these halves were like five minutes long. So we had we had five minutes to score goals, and we didn't. Um, I guess I'm sticking to restrictions in this. Although when I run out of ammo, I'm not going to anymore. Oh shit! Oh, that was quick. <laughs> I have no choice but to throw myself on your mercy. Really? Uh, I mean, that's right, Nefarious. Your reign of terror is finally sucker! <laughs> that son of a bitch! Anyway. Um, what was I talking about? Right, FIFA. So, yeah, we didn't know what we were doing, and by half time, we'd scored no goals. There was this little kind of kid waiting, about the same age as those people like Burst in Mario Kart, waiting in line. You can also just uh, boost past these enemies if you want. I think I might do. There is no point. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. That was dumb. Shit! Okay, you can do that if you know what you're doing, but I clearly don't. So, so there was a little kid waiting in, waiting in, I would say line, it was just standing, waiting to play the game. And my friend's like, oh, you want the controller? Because we clearly don't know what we're doing. So she gave him the controller and I was still playing. So I'm now versing him, because the friend and I were on opposite teams. And so this kid, starts playing against me and this kid knows what he's doing like really knows is he is absolutely kicking my ass he scores four goals 
I scored none in the second half. Like he had his, like he was doing so well. He had his goalie over the other side, like over, like over halfway. That's how good he was doing. <coughs> Excuse me. That's how good he was doing. And I was just fumbling with the ball, not having a clue what to do. That was karma getting me back for just completely destroying those children. In Mario Kart. Oh. It was funny. Oh, what? Man, these weapons are doing so much damage. Please stop. Please stop. Wow, there was like no time. What the hell? Really? I'm just under it? Ah, oh, shit. Try to jump over it. There we go. Oh, man. <laughs> I love how it hit him in the foot and he was like, ow. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, he's not behind me anymore. I think these guys are the ones you can rush past. Because they won't fire backwards. But we won't. Because I'm not risking it again. I love how the parts of the robots fall to provide cover for them. That's really clever. Wow, there's three of them. Um, oh yeah, and the, the, the other really cool thing that happened. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Really? Ah, oh, this is fucking stupid. I don't even know what that was. I genuinely don't know what that was. Bloody hell. What are we up to now? Only 40 minutes. Jesus, I'm just getting bored. Um, yeah, the other cool thing that they had, which I played more or less in the second half, in the second session of the day, they had this area on the other side in a different building, which had just game consoles in it that you can play. They had uh, some sets of newer ones, so they had some PS4s, some Wii U's, some Xbox Ones. And they also had a retro section managed by a completely different group of people. Like, they brought in these people who own all this retro hardware. And I mean all. Like, anything retro you wanted to play, they had. They had an NES, an SNES, a Mega Drive, they had Amiga, they had Commodore 64, they had Atari 2600. They had fucking everything. It was so cool. And they, they even had, like, more recent stuff like the PS1, PS2, GameCube. It's weird to consider that as retro, but I guess, I guess now, it is. Um, it's, it's so odd that when stuff, when stuff you grew up with becomes old. It's kind of like the official, you are now old, demarcation process. Um, and they had all these classic games and it was awesome. So I spent about half the time in the new session, section and half or, or probably more like three quarters of my time in the new section and a quarter in the, in the old section. But all my time in the old section was spent playing one game and one game only. They had the original Super Mario Brothers for the actual NES. And I'd never played an actual NES before. And they had like, they had CRT TVs for most of these. Some of them they had LCD panels. And that might not seem like it's, it's, it means anything, but when you're playing old consoles that were designed for CRT TVs, you want to play them on a CRT TV. First of all, it just looks more authentic. Second of all, CRTs have no input lag, unlike really big LCD screens. Oh, they're allies. Why am I shooting stuff at them? <laughs> wow! That is the first time I've ever seen the Galactic Rangers do anything remotely useful. Okay, now I have to not die in this fight. If I die at this point, I'll just skip to here, because... Oh god, right, this... This bit's kind of monotonous. Oh, this, pl this plasma thing. Jesus. This is kicking his ass right now. Oh, no, we're out of ammo. Not bouncer ammo, please. Fine. Oh, that's that's doing some damage. See, the problem is I can't hit him when he's up there. I should have used the bouncer while he's down. And I tried about five or six times to beat Mario Brothers on an NES, which and it just felt so good because there was no input lag. So it was really fun as well. 
part of me, like, I've beaten the game before, so part of me just wanted to beat it on, on an actual console. Oh no. But part of me was just playing it because it was fun. It was really fun to play. Oh shit. Oh boy! I did not anticipate this properly. Ooh, he's getting there. This bit's the hardest bit. Oh god. Please, please, no! Not at this point! Not at this point! Come on! Hit him! Please! What the fuck? Are you serious? <laughs> Why weren't they aiming at him? They were aiming at everything the fuck else! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Come on! That is not fair! Okay, I'm gonna use the bouncer to do this. That is nonsense! It wouldn't even aim! It wouldn't even. The bouncer could not even. Ah, oh, I'll meet you back there. God damn it. Oh! That stopped me because the weapon upgraded! Come on! I lost momentum because the fucking weapon upgraded. Are you serious? God damn it. Well, we may as well cut back in here because I'm definitely including that. See, I tried about five to six times to beat Super Mario Bros. Partly because, you know, I just wanted to beat it on the actual console. Partly because it just felt so good to play because of that no input lag, which you just don't get on, on emulators or anything like that. And I just kept dying at the end. I kept getting hit by stuff. Uh, you know, I, you can beat Mario Bros. in five, in like, you know, ten minutes if you know where all the warp pipes are, which I do. But it's not, it's not, doesn't mean it's like super easy. The path is easy to memorize, but you're still gonna get past all the, you know, all the enemies and stuff. And if you don't have the Fire Flower, that can be tr quite tricky. Because you don't have the, um... You don't have any weapon, you just gotta kind of dodge the enemies, you know, and you can, you can, um, tank through them and take hits, but you want to save your hits for battle, you want to save that for Bowser. And in Super Mario Bros. 1, like the original game, if you had the Fire Flower and you got hit, you went back to being Super Mario. Oh, uh, sorry, you went back to being Small Mario. Not Super Mario. It wasn't, it wasn't like every modern Mario game where you went, where you lost, you know, you went back a step. You went back to the, to the, the weakest version of Mario that there, that there is. Which is incredibly annoying. So to get back, to, so to, to get the fire flower back, first of all, you can only you one more hit, you're dead. Secondly, to get the fire flower, uh, fire flower back, you have to get a mushroom first. I'm wasting these. Oh boy. Yeah, that's it, that's it, it's over. Oh my god, what? Oh, you've got to be fucking joking me. What? For fuck's sake. Oh. Oh, why? Why do I do this? And it, what, what was completely my fault too, because it wasn't like it was a glitch or anything, I just stopped caring because I thought the game would stop paying attention to the fact I was being hit. Oh man. That is so annoying. I thought it was just going to go back to the throwing heaps of clones at me like he did at the end of the previous fight. Apparently not. Oh, fucking hell. That's just annoying, it really is. Anyway, back to my run. So yeah, I kept getting hit towards the end, and whenever I made it up to Bowser, if I even did make it up to Bowser, I would he would always hit me. Because Bowser in Super Mario Bros. 1, he's brutal. 
it's not like in Mario Maker where he just kind of throws fireballs at you and stuff. He would throw a fuck. He was like, he's like a he's like Bowser, the Bowser from Mario Maker, and a Hammer Bro combined. Oh what? Seriously, what even was that? I don't even know what that was. Fuck. Come on. by just stupid shit that I can't see. I also hope this doesn't fucking... I was about to say evolve like it's Pokemon. Uh, upgrade again before I get to the fucking end again because seriously, we're gaining levels fast here because, you know, it's the final boss and all the fucking enemies have a lot of XP. It's been, I, I kept dying at Bowser because he throws a fuck ton of hammers at you. He only, he only jumps every so often. That's how you're gonna, that's how you're gonna beat him. You're gonna either jump over him while dodging the hammers, which is very hard, because he throws a lot of hammers, and he throws them at random, his AI is random. Or, you have to run under him. Which is just as difficult, because he jumps, and gives you just enough time to run under him. And if you don't jump, if you don't run at the right time, he'll hit you, and again, it's one hit kill, you're dead. And I never made it up to him with, with Super Mario, or Fire Mario, so, you know. And there was a, there's a, right before Bowser, there's a hammer bro next to a pit with a lava thing that kind of um, flies out the ground. So you have to avoid that. At, you have to avoid the hammer bro and the gap. Well, if you hit the, if you hit the lava gap, you just die. You have, to, you have to avoid all of that. Ah, shit. You have to avoid all of that to get to um, Bowser with either Super Mario or the Fire Flower. You hit anything, you're going to be facing him as Small Mario. So I, I just kept getting hit and dying, and I had to, I, did, I didn't want to hog the console, so I kept walking away from it, going back to the, the Wii U section. I played a lot of t uh, Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker, which is really cool. I want to pick that up. Wow, okay, he's so close to dying. Shit. Just... That! That's right, we got you with the fucking lava gun. Oh, is this important, oh. sir? It's almost time for my solo. Begin the transformation! I call it Base Odyssey. Now, Lawrence! <sighs> if you insist. Weapon upgrade in the background. Um, um, if you've played it, if you played the the Toad levels, the Captain Toad levels in Super Mario 3D World, it's really cool what they've done with it. I also played a lot of uh, Ratchet and Clank into the Nexus, which I already have. I was just playing because it was just set up there. Um, Mario Kart 8 as well was set up there, and I just, I just beat some GPS because they didn't have online connection, uh, online connectivity. Also played some Xbox Ones. Um, and all the TVs that they had for, for the Xbox Ones, they were all set to have killer boxes on the top and the bottom, like for some kind of ultra widescreen mode. Even though that it was, it was an Xbox One, so it was supposed to fill the screen. All their TVs were set up were set up wrong, and the, I'm assuming these were set up to show off Xbox Ones to go, hey, it was you know, Xbox One, yeah, it was cool. All the TVs were set up wrong, so. Yeah, that was way easier than the final boss. Just go around in circles. Oh, what a humiliation! Defeated by squishies! Oh, I'll never live this down! Warning! Reactor detonation in 60 seconds. Lawrence, engage the teleporter. Would you care to specify a destination, sir? Who cares? Just get us out of here. What? That wasn't even close to 60 seconds! Bye -bye. 
We're live from the star-studded premiere of the latest hollow film in the Secret Agent Clank series. The atmosphere is positively electric as thousands of fanatical fans clamor for a glimpse of their favorite celebrities. Agent Clank, it seems your luck has finally run out. <laughs> the time has come to say goodbye. <laughs> your tricks won't do you any good this time, Agent Clank. I have been waiting for this moment a long time, and now I am going to blow you into a million pieces! <laughs> Get this thing off me! <laughs> Well, he got that monkey off his back. <laughs> Come on. Do not even think about it. See, so yeah, all the Xbox ones were set up incorrectly. Um, <clears throat> and I kept walking, you know, back and back into the retro section to see if the NES was available if someone else was playing it. So I could let other people play it. And... I eventually came in to find this kid playing it. And... This kid was doing pretty good. He was blazing through the levels. He knew all the pipe shortcuts. He wasn't getting hit. He knew where all the one-ups were. He was going really well. But I, I'm like, well, he's gonna fuck up at some point. I mean, I fucked up every attempt I made, you know. This, I've been back to this NES so many times, this has only been this kid's, like, first or second attempt. There's no way. He's gotta mess this up. And... You know, it's, but he wasn't. He was just going through it so well. And he made it up to the final level with, um, with Fire Flower. And he was I'm like, oh, maybe he's, maybe he's gonna do it. Maybe he's gonna get to Bowser without, with you know, without getting hit. And he got hit on the underwater bit. For anyone who's played my uh, Super Mario Brothers, the underwater bit in the final level, that's where he got hit by one of the fire bars. I'm like, oh no, he's screwed now. He's gonna get hit by Bowser. He's gonna he's gonna die. He's gonna mess this up. He gets to Bowser. Runs right under him and hits the the axe to drop the bridge, and he beat it on what could only have been his first or second try. He's evidently played the game before, but god damn it, was I annoyed at the amount of times I had to play that. What well, I did play that game and didn't beat it, and this kid comes along and beats it in one fucking fell swoop. So after that, I was determined to beat it, so I went back to it one more time after this kid was done. And I went through... I, I think I got up to, to world, like level 8-3 without getting hit. So the, the level right before Bowser. Right before the final castle. And this guy was like alongside me, and I'm, I'm going through and I'm not getting hit. I've got the Fire Flower, I've got no reason to stop to get any power-ups. I've got enough 1-ups to last me, you know, I'm doing good. And... Oh, I shouldn't even need one-ups if I keep the, the Fire Flower till Bowser, I'll just tank through him, you know. And this guy says, oh, why didn't you get the Fire Flower? And I stop to look at him without pausing, and I get hit by something, and him, which means I lose the Fire Flower, because there are certain, like, the power-ups in, in the level before Bowser are pretty well hidden. There's these two sections, each with two Hammer Brothers, and two rows of brick, brick blocks, and in one brick block, there's a power-up, if you want it. I just run past it because it's not worth trying to get it because I always die trying to get it. I either get hit or I, I die if I'm small Mario. So 
I just, I just gun past it. And this time, I had a fire flower, so there was no reason for me to stop. And this is like, oh, I could have got the fire flower. I stop, look at him, I get hit, losing my fire flower. And by the time I pay attention to the screen again, because you can't run backwards in Super Mario Brothers, the original one, I'm now past where the power up is, and I can't even get the the mushroom to turn to Super Mario. Now I'm stuck as small Mario because of this fucking asshole. Who thought it was necessary to say, oh, we could have got the fire flower. I didn't need it, you fucking idiot. I didn't need it. <laughs> oh. So anyway, now I'm stuck as small Mario. And also, by this point, it's like 10 minutes till closing time. So this is my last attempt. If I don't get it done this time, I have to leave. I I, I, I have to leave with without winning. So I go through the level, and I'm trying to do it, and I'm trying to do it. And I'm getting through it, and I'm not getting hit. I can't get hit. If I get hit, I die, you know. I'm not sure if I died in the final level, it wouldn't really matter, because I had a couple of 1-ups, and there's no power-ups in the last level, anywhere. So, whatever you start as, that's the most you're going to get. If you get hit, uh, stiff shit, you're small Mario. So I made it all the way up to Bowser, again, as small Mario. I knew I couldn't jump over him, because those hammers were too random, so I waited for him to jump up. And I ran under him and I hit that axe and I fucking beat that game on an original NES. And I even have a picture of it. So... Fuck you, game. I beat your ass. Yeah, they had, they had heaps of retro stuff there. They had um, Sonic running on the Mega Drive. They had Goldeneye running on the N64, which was cool. Crash Bandicoot on the PS1. Crazy Taxi on a Dreamcast. They had a Dreamcast there. That was really cool. I'd never seen Dreamcast before. That control is so odd. It's so weird. <laughs> and Crazy Taxi going on that. They had, um, I think Donkey Kong's Bongo Blast, if that's what the game's called, going on the GameCube. Though I didn't see the GameCube. My friend saw the GameCube, but I didn't. Um, they had Super Mario Kart on the SNES. They had Frogger going on, I think it was like the Amiga, I think. It was one of the, like, the computer-based ones. Space Invaders on the old 2600. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. That re that whole retro era was stunning. One thing that kind of irked me, and this kind of got me going on the marketing kind of side of it, kind of questioning. Um, there was a Logitech booth, and all the booths will give out like, oh, there you go. <laughs> the same people who made the, the drivers for this game. I'm about to shit all over them. Um, nothing against you Logitech products, they seem to work just fine. But their booth, most of the booths will give out free stuff, you know, as, as a kind of marketing thing, like, hey, have some free stuff with our logo all over it, so everyone sees our logo. And... Um, at this particular booth, I said, okay, we're gonna give everyone a ticket, and we're gonna do, like, a raffle, or... Oh, no, 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 we're not gonna do a raffle. What they did was they just threw stuff they threw wristbands i think into the crowd or something like that and your band would have a certain certain letter combination on it and if your letter combination your letter combination would match up to a certain prize so there'd be one or two that would win headsets and there'd be one or two that would win like a steering wheel and a couple of people would win uh keyboards and mice and stuff like that but before they did the throw out they, they threw the stuff out they said okay we're going to, have to get you into the logitech spirit or something like that and okay well, when i say logitech you say Gamer, Logitech, Gamer, Logitech, Gamer. What do you mean we can't teleport to a planet? I'm afraid we're well out of range, sir. Perhaps if you had bothered to specify a destination. When will we be in range? Oh, I'm sure something will come along in, say, five or ten thousand years. Ah! I don't believe! I don't suppose you can play drums. Yeah, so anyway, they had um, the Logitech booth, and before they threw the stuff out, they were like, Okay, we've got to get into the Logitech spirit. When I say Logitech, you say Gamer. When I say... and then they had some other when I say X, you say Y thing. And hearing... One guy say Logitech, and a crowd of people chant GAMER like that. All it reminded me of was the fucking Nazis. Fucking Nuremberg rally, you know. 
it was like the Logitech Fuhrer was standing up there indoctrinating people. It was just, it was so weird and off-putting. Oh my god. It was seriously like, ugh, you know. Oh man, it was odd. Um, and it, that was so like, whoa, like that was like, what are you trying, why, like a marketing person had to sit behind a desk and go, you know what we should make them do we should, we, to, to, before they get free stuff, that we should make them chant things in unison. That won't sound weird, you know. And all the, the the games have like all these set pieces, like NFS had a, a street car there for no apparent reason, and they had uh, a pretty cool looking uh, horse drawn cart in the, um, the what you call it, uh, Assassin's Creed area. May as well buy this now because I've got nothing else to do. Yeah. That's the final skill point, and we now have all the skill points. That is, at least by the PS2 standards, ignoring the trophies that are in this room, because to get all the trophies in this room, you have to get all the weapon upgrades. That is 100%. Almost. Only missing two trophies. One of which I think get all the weapons. I'm not sure what the trophies are. One of them is upgrade all the, all the trophies. The other one, I am not sure. I'll put it up on screen. Yeah, I had all these set pieces and stuff, and it was weird. I don't know. It's just like, is this necessary? Is this marketingly necessary? God damn it. I mean, yes, it's trying to look fancy. It looks cool and getting into the spirit of things, but god damn it. I can't help but be skeptical. I just can't. Another thing that was really fucking weird. Um, my friend and I were speaking to a few employees who worked at the Expo, because they get a lot of people up there from all kinds of EB stores to work at the Expo over the weekend. So there's a lot of EB staff there. And if you didn't know this, this might be true for all conventions or maybe just this one. The people who you see in those costumes, like the, the Mario costumes or the Luigi costumes or whatever, they might actually not be staff of the company the, the character belongs to. They might be staff of the expo itself, the people running the expo, not the companies who are hiring space at the expo, not the publishers or the, or the developers, but the managers of the expo itself might put staff in those costumes. And we were talking to a woman who, about our age, who was in the Mario costume. And they were talking about how they were getting slapped on the ass and poked in the chest and the rib cage and the boobs and like not by accident, like on purpose. People were just doing weird stuff. And thinking, what, what the fuck? Like, the, the actual people inside this? What are you? What are you doing? Like, what the hell? That, that is so weird. That's like, how do you not know there were people inside that? That's just, what the fuck? Ah, some people are just fucking disgusting, honestly. It's hot and sweaty enough inside those fucking costumes, and you're just making it worse. Ah, oh, honestly, man. I don't know what's why is. Ah, oh, goddammit. Anyway, that's a good place to finish off the LP on physical abuse. Um, thank you for sticking with me through this, seriously, it's been way too long. If I do anything like this again, I swear to god, it will not be this panned out, it will be planned in, adva uh, in advance, <laughs> there will be plenty of voice cracking. Uh, it'll be planned in advance, for episodes will be recorded in advance, it'll be planned out, it will not be scattered over several months between episodes, it's dumb. It's just dumb. As for future stuff, I'll probably record a bit of LBP3 when I get it. If it gets here today or tomorrow, I'll record some of that. Um, might record a bit of Super Mario Maker as well while I still have it before I have to give it back to my friend. And, you know, I'll get the game myself eventually, but until then I won't be able to do anything. Um, 
Ratchet Gladiator probably won't start for a while because I want to plan that out and get it organized before I do it. I do not want to have the same issues with that LP that I had this with this one, with procrastination and not planning things out and uh, worrying that I had too much work to do in an episode when I actually had nothing to do. Not going to happen again, so it might be a while before you see any LP of this length again. It might be just be small little, uh, bits of content before anything extensive comes out. But thank you for sticking with me through this. I've been Bloodjoy, and I will catch you guys next time.